We're looking at five classic little radios today, five different brands, yet there's something vaguely familiar about them, don't you think? What is it that's so appealing about these little radios? Maybe it's the similarity to the Sony TR610, the iconic pocket radio that these radios knock off. The round speaker, the wire handle that doubles as a stand. These radios are thicker than that Sony, and less, shall we say, shapely, Yet somehow they are every bit as interesting, especially with all the variations to trim and chassis, inside and out. In a transistor radio, the round speaker thing can be traced to the Zenith Royal 500, but of course in radio generally, that round speaker thing goes back much further than that, well back into the tube era. But for the radios we are looking at today, and indeed for many transistor radios from Japan and Hong Kong, the design inspiration likely goes no further back than the Sony already mentioned, shown here in front. This True Tone, which already has a video of its own on this channel, has a three-transistor chassis. The Hereever TRN3 is a three-transistor as well, but it employs early oval-shaped black NEC transistors. The Harley and the Suntone are six transistors with chassis very similar to each other. They have transistors marked TEN from Kobe Kogyo as does the three-transistor True Tone. The Elgin 66A is a four-transistor, employing these TEN-branded transistors. Here's the Hereever three-transistor again for comparison. Some parts are similar, as you see, but most of what's on the circuit board isn't. The transistors that were in that True Tone were TEN cylindricals, but now here's another True Tone, same DC3090 model number, but with different transistors. It has three of the NEC branded transistors in the oval shape. You might expect the board in here to be the same as the three transistor here ever with the same NEC transistors, but not even close. Confused? Don't worry about it. Here's this little beauty as a six transistor Dream 6. Does this ad indicate the actual maker of this radio? I wish. No. T. Chetani and Company was a distributor, a trading company. They're still in business, by the way, and have been at it since 1909. But they are out of Dream 6 radios, I'm sad to say. If you have any clue about the actual maker of these radios, or the origin of these brands, I wish you'd leave us all a note in the comments. I'm guessing the Hereever brand might have been imported for the Northern California outfit that sold Hereever crystal radios back in that era. Maybe. The Suntone brand, I really have no idea, nor the Harley. I've seen other Suntone radios, and even an American-made Harley, but they bear no resemblance and give no indication of being from the same outfits. The Elgin, I would guess, is from the Elgin watch people and would have been sold in jewelry stores. The Bulova watch people had been in the transistor radio business doing that since 1955, from almost the beginning of the transistor radio era. So why not Elgin? The origin of the true tone, that we know. Well, not who made it, but we know who sold it. True Tone was a brand of Western Auto Stores out of Kansas City, Missouri, and they used that brand on TVs, radios, guitars, and other things. 
There's a video on this channel about Western Auto and the many interesting things they sold. This ad from around 1960 shows the radio on sale for 1888. This price seems pretty low for a transistor radio in those days, even a three transistor. And this brings up the snotty headline I wrote for this video, which, if I haven't changed it by now, says these radios are cute and cheap. Cute? I think we have total agreement on that, don't we? Cheap? Well, what I mean mostly is how easily their cabinets could and did break. Very rarely are these radios found in decent condition, and these here, as nicely as they present themselves, have many little flaws. The plastic was just really thin. Take a look along the edge of the cabinet. This is the thinnest plastic I've seen on a product since shrink wrap. And price-wise, as we've seen, the True Tone, at least, was on the low end. So were all the others, I assume, meaning these radios were likelier to be owned by kids than by older people who tended to have more serious radios and take better care of them. So these little radios were more likely to get jostled around and be fidgeted with. Nowadays, they make toys specifically for fidgeting. Back in the transistor radio era, we had to fidget wherever we could.